If there is one video you watch to learn more about healing in pugs, I hope it's this one. Welcome to episode one of How to Heal Pugs. We're going to be talking about reaction times and triage healing. So why reaction times? I want you all to consider the health bar of your party. That's reaction time. Let's say someone took a third of their life bar and in a moment they're going to take another third. Well, that's okay because you have time to react to that incoming damage because they're only losing a third of their health bar. However, if they were at 10% HP, you would have a much harder time reacting before that damage hits them and they die. So typically, we want to keep health bars up so that we can react better to incoming damage. It is just a nice sentiment to keep everyone healthy. However, it's important to note that at higher levels of play, if you don't need to be healing, you can do damage. And if no one's in danger of actually dying, then sometimes doing damage is more effective for the group. But that is slightly more advanced. But that's why this reaction time is so important. It's important for every level of play. So what is reactable damage? Typically, unavoidable and intended damage. That sort of thing is, say, the Storm Shield and Halls of Valor, or the Dispels on the last boss of Jade Serpent Temple. You know it. There's plenty of moves in the game that can't be stopped or are hard to stop or not worth stopping, and they do trivial amounts of damage or large amounts of damage that you're expecting, and you can heal. And that's why that typically tends to be the most important thing to heal. We know a tank buster's coming, we should keep an eye on the tank. If we know a DPS just got targeted for some bomb that they have to move out of the room, well, they're going to probably take a bomb to the face, you might want to heal them on their way back. That sort of thing is obvious, but it's the unreactable, dodgeable, avoidable damage that's a bit of a concern. The things that can be interrupted and kicked, or CC'd, or line of sighted. See, you can't always stop these as well, depending on the scenario, but the more of it you can stop, the easier it is to heal. If you could prevent all avoidable incoming damage in a dungeon, you'd find that it's pretty easy to heal for the most part. As long as you hold your cooldowns for boss mechanics or mob mechanics that you know you're going to need them on, it should pan out quite nicely. But it never works like that, and you all know it never works like that. So how do we heal when the going gets rough? This is where triage healing comes in. Triage is a sort of dark term that refers to who can we save versus who can't we save, and we put the healing resources where they go accordingly. In World of Warcraft, this is a very useful concept, because sometimes you have a tank dying, you have a DPS dying to a mechanic, and then you have two people who are standing in the fire. Who do we heal? And that's typically a disaster scenario, and I actually want to go over that um, in a little bit. But my triage looks like this. Incoming intended expected damage. You, as in me, or the player that's healing. The tank and the DPS. So that order is important because there are scenarios where the incoming damage is being healed and then the tank dies. If you die, you can't continue healing the tank or the, the other DPS. And... It's okay to let a DPS die because the DPS aren't always mandatory for finishing a fight, although typically you want them around for all the wonderful benefits of having a full party. But if someone has to die, the DPS are our lowest priority. Now, it does suck to hear that if you're a DPS player, but typically DPS players have tools to keep themselves alive. Actually, everyone does. So you need to be able to not only go for who needs healing first, but sometimes you have to rely on it. That last boss in Jade Serpent Temple is a great example of that. The Dispel ends up becoming a bit too much to handle as a healer, and a player will need to survive with that debuff on them. After they've popped all their defensives, it gets a little bit trickier as to who to heal. So if you can track who still has defensives and doesn't have defensives, you can very easily pick the correct targets to Dispel based on knowing if they have anything up or not. However, the reason you're so important on this list as well is let's say the tank does die. Now you have three DPS who have to survive a boss while you guys hopefully try to get a battle res out or survive long enough that you can get to the end of the pull and raise the tank. And that's because the next person on the aggro table is about to get slapped. They don't have any natural defense or mitigation tools or active mitigation tools that are up currently. And while there are some classes like Holy Paladin that might have access to an active mitigation tool, chances are you're not dumping your holy power into that and you're also not the top of a threat table. So you need to keep that deep, those DPS alive as long as possible while we try to resurrect the tank. And so if a DPS dies because they were unable to prepare for the incoming damage of suddenly becoming a tank, 
you need to be ready to go to the next DPS as we try to get that tank up. Now, these are also disaster scenarios. Now, I'm going to have some footage here of a disaster that happened in my Jade Serpent Temple where the Paladin did not start be, uh, battle resing the tank immediately. But these are sometimes survivable. And if you can survive it, good triage, good understanding of where your resources should go when crap hits the fan can make disasters turn into livable, winnable scenarios and potentially even save an entire key. Emergencies. Let's talk about them because we do have emergency cooldowns. Every healer has access to buttons that are meant for horrible situations. How do we use those? Well, my rule of thumb is simply this. If you need a cooldown for a boss fight and you will not have the cooldown back up during the boss fight, it's not worth it. So there is a good example of this. I have a three minute cooldown on preservation called Emerald Communion. However, if I want to do Emerald Commune in a pull because something's going to crap and I want to suddenly heal everyone back to full because otherwise we'll die. Well, that's a three minute cooldown. But if I have two other cooldowns I can use and I can get to the to three minutes from now in a boss fight, which might only be one minute and a half, two minutes into a boss fight, that Emerald Commune will be back up. So it might just change the order in which I use my emergency cooldowns, but that means that it's safe to use this button in this scenario. Now that can be a bit tricky to keep track of. If you're about to head into a fight where you know you need a cooldown, don't press your emergency buttons. However, if you think you have enough time to hold on and get your cooldowns back, then yeah, go for it. On fortified weeks, it tends to be, I don't use my emergency cooldowns as often on boss fights because they're typically not as hard. And then I'm using my emergency cooldowns when things go rough in big pulls because it's fortified week and everything hits way harder. So this is very class dependent. And some of these features in triage flowcharts depend on your composition, right? If you have two warlocks in your party, then you know you have two very thick DPS that can survive a hit or two better than most classes. And you all probably have a stack of lock rocks, so people will be able to heal a little bit of incoming damage if things get a bit spooky for them. But if you know the rogue popped all of their CDs, all of their defensives, and that you know their cheat death is on cooldown, oh, that rogue's gonna be very squishy, and it's gonna be very important that you keep them up if they get targeted for something bad. And so as you get better at the game, you'll find where you should put your resources in when, but as long as you follow incoming expected damage, you, the tank, and then the DPS, you'll find the places where it works a little bit differently. And there are sometimes moments in boss fights, very scary situations, like say Ruby Life Pool's second boss, where you have a ton of incoming damage and the entire party will take a ton and then the tank eats a nasty tank buster. But as long as the DPS are kicking the ad, you have time as a player to stop healing the party, heal up the tank, then finish healing up the party before any more incoming damage would come to mess them up. But it can be a little spooky to see all those health bars get low and to not be sure if you can save them or not. Knowing about the fights and knowing how they work will only strengthen your ability to heal. And as the season goes on, you'll be more and more comfortable with those flow charts in specific instances. This is a concept that can be challenging. So give yourself some time with it, but realistically, as long as you are aware of who can die and who can't die, know that sometimes it's not worth putting resources into someone who's just going to blow up on something avoidable. You're gonna find your healing life is a lot easier. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe if you want more of this. We have plenty more pug healing guides coming. So I hope you guys are excited for those and I'll see you in the next one.